Hey everybody, Kevin here. So I realized when I was editing this video, I left out an important part, and that's how to figure out uh, the size of these trays right here. And I do that by just drawing everything out on a hunk of plywood. So always start by drawing out everything life-size if you can to figure out exactly what you need so you don't make something that's uh, wrong. In this video, we're gonna show you how to build these two trays. We made them out of poplar, a half inch thick with a nice three quarter inch ring around the outside so nothing falls off of them. So I'm gonna show you how to make a, the template and a couple of jigs so you too can make these just like this. I'm gonna show you how to build everything from start to finish from template to tray. And it takes about three days and uh, film the whole entire thing. So uh, let's get to the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Hey everybody, Kevin here from Humble Craftworks. Welcome back to another episode of Woodworking with Mr. Kevin. That's me. In today's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to build ourselves a uh, Lazy Susan. <laughs> I hate Lazy Susans. I have two in my house and I never use them. All I do is store a bunch of crap I never ever use. My client really wants a Lazy Susan and I drew several different pictures. Hey, we can do this, we can do that. We can put a, a Le Mans 2. I'll put a picture of it over here. Those things are amazing. And they get way back in there. They use all the space. Lazy Susans have cabinets that are usually 36 inches by 36 inches, but we only have 32 inches. So I have to make a custom one, which I've made right here. I had another problem and that was I need a specific size for the opening I have, so I have to make my own. And we're gonna make the Lazy Susan little pie-shaped tray out of wood today and I'm gonna go run you through the whole damn thing. So as woodworkers, we have to figure these things out. We have to engineer cabinets that aren't normally designed for the hardware because <laughs> it's just what happens. All right, well, let's get to the video, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe, like, hit the notification bell, and all that. I'll see you in a bit. Here we go. All right, everybody, lazy Susan time. You can see that opening in there. It's very small. This cabinet's about four and a half inches shorter than it should be for even a small lazy Susan. That lazy Susan opening is like seven by seven. And we're going to use this, which I found on the interwebs. Uh, that's the only thing I could find to get. And it came with no instructions whatsoever. This is where the doors go right here. There's actually a little notch on both sides. And it has these little plastic adjuster things. You pop them off and it slides down and it, uh, it works really good. You can adjust the height uh, by this guy right here. Just pop that open, up and down it goes. Set this like this, push it up to the top, lock it in there. And it'll just stay like that after we screw it in place. It'll be awesome. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make a template using the trammel points. We're gonna cut it out, we're gonna set it in place, make sure that'll work. So once we have all that figured out, we're gonna take uh, and figure out if we're gonna put two pieces together and just cut a big circle out of them, or we're gonna make a bunch of little pie pieces, put them together that way. That way we have all end grain or side grain showing at all times, that way maybe it'll be more stable. There's things that clients want that uh, nobody makes. They're like, oh, well, can't we just have this? Well, it doesn't fit, because the damn thing is not enough room. Well, can't we just make it work anyway? Yeah, I'll figure it out. That's my job. That's what they pay me the big bucks for. So this is what we're doing today. And come along if you like. If not, I'll see you later. So the first thing we do is use our snazzy little pencil here. And we're just going to draw a line. Our line needs to be bigger than 20 inches because uh, our Lazy Susan is going to be 19 inches. So we're going to use the strut here. And I'm going to set that on 10 and a half. And this should hit one. That'll make a 19 inch radius. Next thing we're gonna do is just gonna come in here somewhere, just eyeball it, make sure we got enough there, make sure we got enough over here. And we're just gonna come around and just flip this guy around like so. I'm just gonna double check, make sure it's 19 inches. Put that on one and this should be 20. Hopefully you can zoom in and see that. What you should do before you do any of this stuff is cut this out on a table saw, just so it's not this big. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a quick record player jig. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a record player jig in no time flat. Okay, we have a piece of MDF. Put a dado on the back of that thing so this will fit in here. I'm gonna glue this into place real quick. We're gonna drill a hole here and we're gonna put a screw in it and we're gonna slide this into place like this. And we're gonna put a stop over here. So this line, this center line right here is gonna stop right where that starts to cut. Okay? And then we're just gonna spin it like a record player. And the first thing I have to do is measure from the blade over to here uh, nine and a half inches. So we're going to drill a hole in our template here. I'm going to drill a hole in this at nine and a half inches. I'm going to take my rule and just set it right in there, right up against the blade. And we're going to go to nine and a half inches. And I'm going to put a mark. If you want to get this super straight, uh, don't do it by hand. Don't. We have our hole. Next thing I'm going to do real quick is just drill this hole here. So if you're ever trying to drill a center of something, take an awl, put it right on the center where you want to go and give it your awl. 
like that. And that'll help you uh, make this work a little better. Boop, just like that. Now I'm gonna countersink this thing. Yes, sir, that looks good, see that? Now what we should do, we should probably epoxy this into place. So instead of epoxying it, I'm just gonna take some scotch tape here. That'll keep it from falling out. Really? <laughs> I'm gonna put this down on there, somehow. Here it is on the jig. It'll spin around like it's supposed to. Oh, we gotta put a stop on there. I'm gonna get this over here. I'm gonna line the center line up with the beginning of this blade. So we're gonna come in and it's gonna stop. So we're gonna push this in until it hit, hopefully it hits that center line, then we're gonna start spinning it. <laughs> Shall we? Shall we give it a shot? All right, let's see what happens. Go, go forward. So I zoom in. Hopefully it doesn't go anywhere. And we're just gonna spin this. And this damn thing's in the way. That's always so much fun. Whee! Give me that damn thing. Hey, we don't need that. Whoops. All right, that was fun. And there's our circle. Isn't that cool? So I'm gonna epoxy this in now. So you push it in, a little stop there, makes sure it stops right on the center. And uh, we cut barely to the inside of the line. Let's measure this and see what we got. 19 inches. Okay, so here is our template. I gotta notch this now to fit inside of there. The biggest thing is to get your pin in there, whatever you're gonna use. I use a, a screw, cause I got nine million of them. I have a center line and make sure that when you start, give yourself a long enough tongue on this, for your bandsaw at least, to come in and cut everything off. Your template is square. Uh, you wanna cut into it, stop right on the center line and then spin it. And then make sure your fence is out of the way so you don't have to do what I did right in the middle of working. Stupid me, but all right, there we go. All right, so for today's little uh, pie cutout demonstration, we're gonna use Grandpa's square. And we need like seven inches from here to here, and from there to there. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna line the point up with the line, and we're gonna move this around this way until we hit seven. Really? Oh, we're gonna go to the inside of the door. All right, seven and seven eighths. So what we gotta do is measure back in here from face frame to this point, and from that face frame to that point, and that was seven and seven eighths. Make sure that's centered on there, seven and seven eighths, and we're just gonna turn it until we hit seven and seven eighths on both sides. All right, we're gonna use our uh, mechanical pencil here and put a line, and there it is. So this is what gets cut out. This is what we're gonna build, but we're gonna build a complete circle and then cut this out on the bandsaw and somehow figure out how to clean that up. All right, look at that. It's a Pac-Man. Now we're gonna put this in here. That fits in there perfectly, just like that. Uh, instead of making just straight boards, we're just gonna make boards that are uh, 10 by 10, or 10 by 20, or 10 by whatever, and we're gonna cut them at 45 degree angles. So we need boards that are gonna be 10 inches, which will make that a half inch wider, by like 15. And we're gonna make up eight of them, and we're gonna miter them all. I don't know how I'm gonna miter them, but we'll figure that out. All right, we got the Inker 5000 set up. I had a little practice run yesterday where I learned a whole lot. I learned that I did a, a bunch of things wrong, uh, which didn't make that much of a difference, but uh, it still was wrong. So we got one. As I put all these together, and they all look good except for one side over here, had like a 16th of an inch gap in it, and I couldn't figure out what it was. I originally set this to 45, and I cut the 45s. The thing was, when I was cutting the interior ones here, I was cutting it from this side of the blade and the piece was over here, so it was moving a little bit. Just that slight little bit over eight cuts gave me a 16th of an inch gap and it all adds up. So you have eight cuts at 10 thousandths of an inch. It's pretty big. Uh, I messed around with this yesterday. I thought maybe this was off a little bit. It wasn't. Uh, I'm gonna start here in the center with this side here and we're gonna lock this in place. And what we're gonna do now is I'm just going to, uh, I'm gonna make a cut and we're gonna cut this line first and then we're gonna mark it with an X on the side. So I know I've cut it. I'm not gonna cut anything on this side of the blade and think it's gonna work because it won't. All right, here we go. Magic button. Take this and I'm gonna put an X. So I know that I cut that on the right side. And now I'm gonna cut this point coming this way. I'm gonna mark it with an X. not pull your piece back through because that blade will scarf it up and you won't have a tight joint anymore. Wait till the blade stops. 
All right, so for the next cut, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this back so it's cutting square at 90 degrees. And you'll see why in a second. And you're like, what the hell are you gonna do that for? Well, it's a secret. You gotta wait, man. Okay, now I have this set at like 13 and a half. Yeah, Squeaker says it's 13 and a half. So I'm gonna take this, that, put, make sure that's down there. I'm gonna take that and butt that into the stop. Bring this over here. And now all of these, when I'm cutting it this way, because we're cutting from this side again, all of these are gonna be the same size because they're all gonna butt into that stop. Oh my and that's what I didn't do on the last one. The last one I cut it and I kind of freehanded every single cut. So one was a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. You know, it's just stupid Mr. Kevin. We got to butt it into here. We got it ready to go all lined up. I'm going to cut all four of these and then we're going to put them together. Yeah, the button. Four of them. I'm butting them up against that fence right there, putting them together, and they look like they're perfectly in a line. They all feel exactly the same. <laughs> Amazing. I gotta put this away now. <laughs> I just started having fun. So I'm gonna pull this off and we'll, we'll put these together uh, right here in front, okay? These are all labeled one, two, and three, and four. Three and four came out of one board. One and two came out of another board. So we're just gonna keep those kind of together. I'm trying to get the centers to line up with the centers. And that's pretty damn good. First thing I'm gonna do though, before I do anything else, is I'm gonna put a couple dominoes and that way we can line all these up. I'm gonna grab the domino machine. I'll start dominoing these together. All right, here's our little uh, glue up that we're gonna make here. I got it all dominoed together. This is mostly end grain. So we're gonna have to double butter all the pieces and parts which is kind of a pain in the butt, but uh, it has to be done. We're still waiting for the trays to dry, um, but I made some little trim pieces that we're gonna put around the outside of the, the tray, like right here. So I made enough parts. Well, I had enough parts to uh, do them all. Now I'm not sure. They're gonna sit on the outside of the tray about an eighth of an inch when I glue them up. Um, I shaped the interior here using this jig that I just made here out of a bunch of scrap parts. Uh, cut the curve for the back side so they can sit in there like that and we just clamp them into place. The reason I split them up so much is because they have little tiny itty bitty pieces. So these aren't perfect. The backs are just kind of quickly disanded and they're kind of lumpy. So that's why I split them apart. And this one in the middle wiggles. <laughs> you can wiggle it back and forth just so I can actually get them to work. So hopefully by tomorrow we'll have this whole thing sitting inside the cabinet. We'll see how it goes. I might think this is going to be fun tomorrow. Just be hell. You never know. Hopefully it helps somebody out there. If you have any questions or comments, please do so in the comment section below. Uh, thanks for subscribing. We just got a couple new subscribers last day or two. Dennis Pinto, thank you for subscribing to the channel. All right. And Irving Drew, you just subscribed to my channel not too long ago. And thank you very much. I appreciate it. Any more? Oh, <laughs> and Second Base Hero. Thank you, Second Base Hero, for subscribing. You're a hero in my book and Jorge Zapata 100. Thanks for subscribing. All right, look at all the subscribers in you know, like just the last couple of days. Awesome, you know, there's the glue up. Kinda looks like you're going down a hallway. Pretty three dimensional. So how do you sand something like this? I'm gonna put my little cleat down, belt sand across this way, do it the other way real quick and flip it over and do the exact same thing on this side. This seems to feel really good. I'm gonna get to uh, sanding here and I'll show you what they look like when we're all done. All right, they're all sanded up, ready to go. I put this one on the jig already. Yeah, there it is. We have our stop here, so when we go up, should uh, hit right there at the beginning of the blade. It works the same as this one did. I'm gonna zoom in. Hopefully I can zoom in. All right, kinda aim that in there. 
Now we're gonna spin a roof. Oh. I nicked it by like an eighth of an inch. Here we go. It was getting harder to turn because the screw was tightening up. There it is. Now we're gonna unspin the damn thing, get it loose. The record player jig. If anything, you learn how to make a record player jig. Let's put two together and see what they look like. They are uh, within reason of each other. Pretty damn amazing. How are we gonna sand the sides? You see those sides are kind of rough. If I didn't have an edge sander, I would use the disc sander. If I didn't have a disc sander, I would use 80 grit on an orbital sander. Should we see what that does? I'm just gonna do this for a minute and see what it actually does. It usually doesn't come out too well, but well, let's see. All right, here we go. Doesn't look too bad, really. I mean, all right, so we're gonna go from 100 to 150. Here we go. A few moments later. All right, that looks fairly good. I'm gonna sand this one the same way. Then we're gonna go ahead and glue on these little trim pieces here. We're gonna use spring clamps to hold it in place. And once the glue dries, then we're just gonna use this as a template and flush trim that to this. So now we're gonna take this guy right here. We're gonna get that lined up. We're gonna use our awl again, just put it, poke it down the hole. So what I'm trying to do is get these seams lined up here and here. So they're roughly the same. That way it's even looking. Let me get rid of that one. All of these look kind of cool together and the grain kind of matches. Mark this. And I'm gonna actually uh, go back with a triangle and mark these better. That's yeah, pretty close. There it is. So here's the line. I'm gonna come outside the line like a 16th of an inch with the bandsaw and boop, boop, cut it. And then I'm gonna make a template it's just using two pieces of scrap wood. I'm gonna pocket screw them together so we have a nice a 90 degree corner and I'll flesh trim that. Look at all the things you're learning. <laughs> all right, there's our jig. It's a V jig. The bajig. <laughs> Sounds like uh, something else. The bajig is up. Well, there they go. So now, now the fun part, flush trimming them, yay. Uh, how am I gonna hold these on there? I have no idea. Here's the thing, they both have to be exactly the same. And by doing this and just freestyling it on there and just saying, oh, I can line it up to the line, might work for one, but it won't work for both. Cause then one's gonna be a little different than the other cause it'll be back farther or forward. Just a little bit, right? I'm gonna put stops on this jig, curve stops. How are we gonna do that? I'm gonna go get those pieces that we cut earlier. We got these pieces, right? So that's pretty much the same radius except for the band saw blade width. If we needed to make a stop, this would be good, good material to use. Note to self, we gotta do a definite cleanup. I got stuff from four different jobs going on at one time here. Look at that. Yeah. All right, so here's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm going to uh, spring clamp that together here. All right. Got that sprung clamp into place. Got that there. That much of it. Here we go. One inch pins? Sure. So I'm just gonna put a little melamine glue on there. And why am I doing this? Just cause it's just a little bit, just to help hold it in place. We can move it this way but we can't move it back and forth, which will change the uh, width. So all we gotta do now is come over here, line it up and clamp it in place, or... A few moments later. Or, I stop right there and I'm, four things come into my head. Like I said, we can move it from side to side this way, but we can't move it past the stops. And the reason that's important is because if we keep going down this way, uh, the whole Lazy Susan's gonna go sticking out farther than we need it to, and uh, that ain't any good. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that worked out pretty slick. Let me just pull our jig off. So what is that, the second or third jig we've made now? <laughs> and there it is. You see that? Zoom in on there. That's perfect. That is the way you want it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mark up, 
on the inside of the little Pac-Man mouth here. So I know, all right, this is the side you wanted to use. Uh, put some pocket screws in here, three quarters of an inch in and uh, whatever that is. Uh, they're both exactly the same. Now I just have to uh, notch this piece out right here. We're just gonna use a wood pile right here. It's got uh, files on both sides here and both sides here. And I'm gonna start right down the center and I'm actually gonna use this point right here, the little corner. And we're gonna go right towards the center. I tend to uh, start at the bottom and work my way up, so I'm gonna rock it this, you know, this way. Start at the bottom, cut in, come up. And then once I hit that point, then I'm gonna go side to side. I kind of tilt it and start cutting and I bring it forward. Okay, there's that. Uh, there's the corner. All right, nice and square. So now we have to drill a one and five sixteenths hole uh, right there. Uh, we'll probably use one and three eighths. And then I'm gonna put the, uh, I'm gonna glue on all of the uh, this little trim next. Okay, everybody. Can you hear me? Barely hear me. I don't have my mic on. I've got the little Pac-Man mouth uh, flush, absolutely flush. Uh, I drilled the hole and I was gonna drill them both in the center and I realized that if uh, these two little pieces here don't line up with the door, the door is gonna be twisted and won't work. With a Lazy Susan, everything has to be perfectly in a line. Put one on top of the other and drill a hole. That's super important if you're making a Lazy Susan because you don't want them to be off just a little bit one way or the other because it's kind of organic and not absolutely perfect. There we go. So the little bird mouth cut out is in the exact same spot and so is the hole. Okay, there you go. Ta-da, done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these guys here and I, I drew a little three quarter inch line around the outside there using my center finder. Set it to three quarters of an inch and kind of working my way around. And then I'm just laying this out on the lines. Line the lines up with the lines. I have a little block at the end that I use to make sure I got my angle correct. And then I clamp it in place. And I'll attach the next one over here and I'll line this up with the lines. I use my center finder again to get as close as I can to the very ends. Put them together, mark a line on all the pieces and I work my way around as I go. And I get the whole thing clamped up. I use this block over here to get the end correct or as close as I can. And once I have it all in there and clamped up, then I work my way backwards and I glue things up on the way out. It's just that simple. So I don't cut any of this. Uh, on the chop saw. I'm going to use the band saw as my cutting of the line thing and then I'm going to go over to the disc sander over there and I'm going to dis disc it to the line basically and try to get this all lined up the best I can. I'll, uh, I'll time lapse it I guess or something. up, clamp it up, and hopefully it won't get glue everywhere. Our whole gizmo is to not get glue inside the ring because uh, that's a pain in the ass to clean up. Okay, so we're going to start with this guy right here. We're going to use our glue etiquette with our finger on the edge. Glue etiquette here, like this. Okay, just a little bit of glue like that. What we're going to do now is smear it everywhere. We're going to pull it to the outside. I'm also gonna put a little glue on the very end here. This is gonna butt into the door, and I'm just sealing the end with glue. Why are you doing that? Well, if some numbskull puts a drink in here or something wet and spills it, then uh, it won't rot the ends of this out because it'll be sealed with glue. Now we're gonna let it sit overnight. Then I'm gonna flush trim uh, this whole thing to the, uh, the bottom down here. Yeah, there we go, that was fun. Now I gotta flush trim the ring to the tray. My little practice gizmo here we're gonna put on the inside so the base can uh, travel on the base, you know what I'm saying? All right, so we, what we have on here is the double bearing uh, solid carbide twister bit. It works really good, super smooth, and let's hope uh, we don't blow out anything. All right, here we go. That's fun and exciting. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go over to the edge sander. I'm gonna edge sand this. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, kinda cool looking. 
It's pretty complicated for a stupid little thing like this. I think I made it that way, uh, you know, it didn't have to be like pie shaped, but it's more fun to do it that way. If you're gonna do something, you might as well have fun doing it, right? Got it done, here it is. Well, we started out using a trammel point and making this little guy a couple days ago. Glued up a few things and uh, now we're, we're here. To be honest with you, this is kind of fun to do. Installing it, eh, not so much. If you want to make your own, go right ahead. It takes a couple days to do it. It's probably cheaper to just go buy one at the store if you can find one. Uh, for me, it was uh, eight to 10 weeks of waiting and I don't have that long to wait. And this was custom made anyway. It was smaller than most. And I had to engineer that so it would actually work with an inset door, yeah, which wasn't so hard. But if you don't know what you're doing, I guess it would be. All right, everybody. Well, there you go. I'm gonna stop it here because uh, this can go on forever. Just remember, always draw everything out life-size so you can figure what you need. So hopefully you learned something. <laughs> I don't know. And if you have any questions or comments, please do so below. Uh, I really appreciate everybody watching. There's the two trays with a couple coats of finish on them. They came out really well. You don't have to build a lazy season. You can build a table or a tray or whatever you want uh, using the same method. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, you have an awesome day. Go outside and play a hug. Somebody you love. Be safe out there, and I'll see you next time right here on Woodworking with Mr. Kevin. That's me. How are we going to get out of here? Uh, we're just going to disappear. We haven't disappeared in a while. Ready? <laughs> Did it work? All right. See ya. Subscribe now. Flat. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. Imagine if these things were all warbling and be like, oh, what's going on with my lazy Susan? Yeah, your lazy Susan's drunk. <laughs> this uh, trim to this waitress station here. Waitress station. All right, so we have, so before I get, uh, so bleh. these cabinets actually come apart and they're built different. I mean, they come apart. This, bleh, yeah. All right, we'll start all over again. Ready, go. So we're, we're gonna make a record player jig right now and uh, lack of record time. So right now we're gonna make ourselves, <clears throat> all right. Hello. The bright is baloney until I step into the light. Step into the light, mister. <laughs> Grrrr. <laughs>